Okay, the next section we'll be going to is section five. That's the air brake section. So if you're following along, turn to your uh, section five, page five dash one. And this section covers air brake system parts, dual air brake systems, inspecting air brakes, and using air brakes. Okay? The parts of the air brakes, there's, let's start with the air compressor. That's mounted on the side of the engine, and it uh, usually is gear driven. It could be belt driven. You want to make sure this is properly mounted and secured. Uh, on top of that is the air compressor that controls it. It tells it when to kick in at 100 psi and when to stop compressing at uh, 125 psi or pounds per square inch. After that, it puts uh, the air compressor is pumping air to the air storage tanks. The tractor usually has two tanks, and uh, you have a wet tank or a primary tank. And you have a dry tank or your secondary tank. Okay, they all have, uh, they have valves on where you can bleed uh, to let the uh, uh, um, air vapor and oil vapor um, out of the tanks. There's a valve on the front, and they got a, a wire lanyard, and you can pull it and it released all that vapor out of there. You want to keep the vapor out of your uh, air system because it can freeze up your airlines and prevent your brakes from working properly. Uh, that some tanks have air tank drains underneath them here. They're a little uh, pitcock that you can turn and it'll drain the tanks out too. Okay. Uh, some trucks have alcohol evaporators that keep alcohol in the system so the ice won't build up. You want to make sure you check that it has a, 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 the right amount of uh, alcohol in it. Uh, these tanks also have safety valves on them that if the air pressure gets up to 150 pounds per square inch, it will pop and release the air pressure. That will also indicate, if that goes off, that you probably have uh, a problem with your air compressor or governor. Okay. The brake pedal is sometimes called the um, foot valve or treadle valve is what uh, activates your brakes on, uh, on your tractor and trailer. And the harder you push on it, the more pressure will be pushed on the brakes. Uh, the foundation brakes are at the end of each axle on uh, your tractor and trailer. So let's walk over and take a look at a uh, mock-up of a foundation brake. The airline will come into your air chamber, this unit, at this point. When you press on the brake, air is forced into this chamber, which pushes this push rod out. And it smooths this slack adjuster, which is connected to this camshaft. At the other end of the camshaft is the S-cam. And as that turns, it, it pushes on these rollers, which push this brake shoe again, uh, that has the pads mounted on it right here, these orange colors, against the brake drum. And that's the parts of your brake. This is something you'll need to know on your pre-trip. Okay. Uh, that's called an S-cam style brake, and that's probably the most common brake used on vehicles today. There are wedge brakes that work similar to it, except that instead of the S-cam, it uses a wedge. And there are disc brakes. And some trucks you'll find with disc brakes on them. Uh, the supply pressure gauges on your dash will, show you, will tell you how much air you have in your air tanks. Uh, and sometimes it's, it's two gauges, two separate gauges, a, sec, a primary and a secondary. And sometimes it's one gauge with two needles. Uh, you may have an application pressure gauge on your dash. If you do, that's a gauge that tells you how much pressure you're putting on the uh, foot brake pedal. Okay? And uh, don't confuse those because there's a test question on there about uh, the difference between a supply pressure gauge and an application pressure gauge. Be sure you understand that. Okay. Now all, all systems, are, all trucks are required to have a low air pressure warning uh, lights and or buzzer on them. When your air pressure drops below 60 PSI, uh, you should get a red light and a buzzer. Um, if it keeps dropping on down, uh, you will get uh, your spring brakes, brakes will activate on your uh, tractor and you will come to a stop. Uh, and if it gets down into the 
um, one or a, a 20 to 40 psi range, that's when it acti activates the spring brakes and it stops your tractor and trailer. Uh, in your uh, air brake system, you have a stoplight switch. It's a pressure sensitive. If you just tap your air your foot pedal just a little bit, it um, it will cause your brake light to come on. Uh, older trucks used to have front brake limiting valves. Uh, that's something that you could actually limit the amount of braking going on on the front wheels of your truck. Uh, they, this became uh, a little bit dangerous because uh, it reduced the stopping power. Uh, they did some uh, tests and they found that front wheel braking is good under all conditions so they decided they didn't need that uh, limiting valve anymore. Spring brakes are something that uh, they came up with because uh, they found that if they just set the brakes with air pressure that eventually the air pressure would bleed off and, and your unit would roll away. So they come up with a spring brake and when the air pressure is removed from the spring brake, that's this unit right here, inside you see the springs, it, these springs are held back by air. When you remove the air from them, these springs push this push rod out and apply the brakes. Okay? Uh, this also will happen if you pull this red switch out. It will remove the air from this brake chamber and it will apply the brakes to your trailer. Also on your dash you have a parking brake control. This is for your tractor. So whenever you leave your tractor you want to set your parking brake. So you just reach out and pull this yellow knob out and that will set the spring brakes on your tractor. Uh, the anti-lock braking system is required like uh, we said before if you recall on uh, tractors made after March of 1st 1997 and on trailers after March 1st 1998. Uh, automatic braking systems are there to help you can keep control of your vehicle in the, in the case of an emergency stop. Okay, okay. Uh, the newer tractors have dual air brake systems on them and what they are is two separate systems with one set of controls. Okay. Before driving a, a vehicle with uh, dual air brake systems you want to allow the air to build up to at least a, a hundred psi per pounds per square inch. Um, when you inspect your brake system, uh, you should uh, do it just like you would do in your pre-trip and uh, during your en engine compartment check, check your air compressor dry belt if it's belt driven um, and make sure there's no uh, leaks or uh, uh, loose connections. When you do your walk around inspection, um, check uh, your brakes, drums, discs, linings, uh, slack adjusters, push rods and all the things incorporated in the brake. Uh, you want to test your low pressure warning signal. Uh, do that by uh, pumping your brakes until the air pressure drops below 60 psi and you should have a signal come on. The way you check that your spring brakes come on is you have both brakes released and you pump it until uh, the fan the brake pedal until it gets down to 20 or 40 psi and they should pop out. That will set your spring brakes. The um, check the rate of air pressure buildup. It should go from about 85 to 100 psi within 45 seconds. Uh, test your air leakage rate on a uh, combination truck. And when you pull your and when you pull your parking brake out, watch your uh, air uh, gauges, and it should fall less than three psi in a minute. And then uh, put your foot on the brake pedal for, to apply about 90 psi and watch it and time it and uh, it should fall less than 4 psi in a minute. Okay? You also want to check your air compressor governor cut in and cut out pressures. As you uh, fan your air thing, uh, your uh, air brakes down with your brake pedal, when it goes below 100 your air compressor should cut in and you should see the needle start to rise and as it gets up to 125 range it should cut out and it should stop rising. If it continues to do so, you have a problem. You test your parking brake uh, on your tractor, but you stop the vehicle, put the parking brake on, and put it in low gear and pull forward and feel the resistance, and you know your brake is uh, holding. To test your service brakes, wait till you have normal air pressure, and then uh, move forward about five miles per hour, brake firmly, and 
make sure that the tractor stops in a straight line that doesn't pull to either side or the other, which would indicate that you have brakes out of adjustment. Uh, now that we've covered the parts of the brakes and how they, how they function, um, let's talk about how to use your brakes. Normal stops, you just push the brake pedal down, okay? Control the pressure so the vehicle comes to a smooth, safe stop. Uh, don't push the clutch in until the engine RPM is down close to idle when it stops, like the starting gear. Uh, when you brake with anti-lock brake systems, you brake like you normally do. Uh, there's no difference. Even if you lose your anti-lock brake systems, you still brake like you normally would brake, okay? Uh, emergency stops, uh, remember we discussed earlier, about controlled and stab braking. That's the type of emergency stop. And remember, controlled braking is when you push as hard as you can and right before your wheels lock up, you release and then you uh, reapply and do it the same way. Stab braking is when you push as hard as you can on your brakes until they lock up, then release them, let the wheels start rolling again. You used to take a couple of seconds and then uh, reapply the brakes. Be very careful with this. Uh, the stopping distance with air brakes is a little different than with hydraulics brakes. Remember we talked about perception, uh, reaction, and braking distance. Uh, with the air brakes you have one more element involved. It's called brake lag because air brakes tend to lag just a little bit. Uh, to kind of give you an idea, at 55 miles an hour uh, your brake lag, you'll travel about 32 more feet before that brake fully engages. So now you're talking about the uh, perception distance, reaction distance, brake lag distance, and the braking distance. And that, for example, at 55 miles an hour, total stopping distance for a, a truck is about 451 feet. Proper braking technique. Um, remember the use of brakes on long and or steep downgrades, you've got to use a proper braking technique so you won't overheat your uh, brakes and, and cause brake fade or failure. You get, select a safe speed. Uh, Put your brake on lightly until the speed comes down five uh, miles per hour below that. Release the brake, let it come back up to your safe speed, and then uh, reapply the brake. You continue to do this. And remember, this lets you uh, control your speed and also gives your brakes a chance to cool off. If you got low air pressure, if the low air pressure warning light comes on in the buzzer, uh, that's telling you you have an air leak someplace. And what you have to do is get off the road and uh, safely uh, and find out what's going on. If it continues to uh, drop, your air pressure continues to drop, uh, what will happen is your spring brake will come on and it will stop your tractor and trailer. Uh, remember your parking brake. Anytime you stop you want to pull that parking brake up. Uh, don't forget to do that because it can be very disconcerting when you've gone in and have lunch and you come back out and your truck is uh, playing kissy face with another truck across the way because it rolled into it. It'd give you a lot of trouble. Okay, uh, one other thing I want to mention about the brakes um, is in the braking system is uh, when you pull the uh, trailer emergency brake knob you also activate uh, a tractor protection valve that uh, keeps the air from escaping from your tractor so you still have uh, uh, you can still move the tractor because the spring brakes won't, uh, won't uh, set on it when you do that. Okay, that's the end of the uh, air brake uh, section. And the next thing we want to talk about is combination vehicles.